Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Gallo Martinez walked down the hall with tears in his eyes, trying not to look back while his children begged him not to abandon them. In February 1985, after a heated argument in which his wife attacked him with a knife that luckily only grazed his face, he fell, decided to flee with his seven children and put an end to the countless mistreatments that he had committed against him and the little ones. He was a very poor man, he had no family, and now that he had fled, he had no idea where he was going with his children or what they were going to live on. Anguished and feeling guilty about what they had to live through, the only thing they could do was to drop them off at an adoption center. To the girls, Amanda, Beatrix, Camilla, and Gertrudis, aged 8, 10, 12, and 13, respectively, some nuns received him in convent. On the other hand, the boys, Daniel, Aloy, and Fernando, aged 2, 3, and 5, were taken in at a foundation for homeless children at the other pole of the city. Separating brothers from sisters from him was heartbreaking. No one wanted to let go, and they all implored him to let them stay together and not abandon us. That tragic scene was etched in the minds of each one of them, especially the oldest, who still describe him as one of the saddest of his life. After accepting their fates and understanding that his father would never return and they would never meet again, the lives of each group of siblings took radically different courses. The girls secretly mistreated by the nuns, who used archaic and highly questionable methods to impose discipline on her since no one wanted to adopt them together, did their best to prevent anyone from choosing them until they were able to flee from there and find a way to survive on the streets. On the other hand, the boys had the opportunity to be adopted together by a foreign couple who, after a decade of trying unsuccessfully to conceive a child, decided to go to an adoption center with international connections to adopt children from underdeveloped countries. To that, they could not provide them with a decent home but all the love that they'd not been able to receive. When contacted by the foundation, they took a plane and made a visit to that place located on the other side of the world. Both were fascinated with the three brothers. The way they protected each other was extremely moving, and this was something they were passionate about seeing, so they decided to adopt them at three. Faced with a completely different country than the one they were born and a couple of strangers who didn't speak the same language, the adoption process for each child was different. Fernando and Eloy adopted faster to their new parents and environment because due to their age they remembered very little of their previous life, and for today those vague memories were so traumatic that their minds simply discarded them. However, for Daniel things were not so simple. He did have numerous details of his past life ingrained on him, and he missed his family. He constantly wondered how they are. Will they remember me? Will I ever see them again? The years passed, and while Amanda, Beatrix, Camilla, and Gertrudis managed to survive with the alms that Arimatis asked of for in a small town, hooked down the clutches of addictions and promiscuity, being still so young, the three brothers grew up in a peaceful environment, free of deficiencies, where they could receive quality academic training and fully enjoy their childhood adolescence. Thirty years had passed, and although in overwhelmingly opposite paths, each brother had made his own life. They always lived in the same neighborhood that their parents once lived, in the constant struggle to survive violence, vices, and of course, yes, poverty. The men, on the other hand, were exercising their careers and enjoying the stability of their home together with their wives and children. Yet as perfect as their lives seemed, they all felt an inexplicable emptiness that, no matter how much they did, never seemed to fill. The only one who could understand the reason for that nostalgic feeling was Daniel, the oldest of them who, regardless of the decades that had passed, did not stop thinking about his sisters, about his land, and that desperate need to reconnect with his origins overwhelmed him, with his blood to be able to find himself and get rid of that feeling that did not allow him to advance. Determined to find his sisters, he undertook an arduous search for them through all means that he had at his disposal, until finally he was able to find one of them. After talking for a few weeks through a well-known social network, Gertrudis looked for a way to borrow a computer with a camera so that she could make a video call with that man who she claimed to be her brother. But when they saw each other through the screen, knowing each other despite the years, both did burst into tears. They continued to communicate in that way for a couple of months. No one could believe that after so long they'd managed to meet, 
although at first they were reluctant to the idea. Daniel managed to convince his siblings to go to their country of origin to meet them and directly. Beyond the painful memories attached to that landscape, the distant place was the one that had received them on their arrival in the world and where they'd all formed that consangious bond that called them regardless of their denial. When they arrived at the airport, there were their sisters and nephews who ran out to greet them and hug them warmly. Between tears and laughter, the brothers celebrated the emotional meetings and took the time to tell each other their anecdotes and get up to speed on each other's lives. When they witnessed the vicissitudes of the sisters, went through and continued to go through, the three men understood why they had not managed to feel peace in their hearts at any time and offered to help them get out of the painful situation that surrounded them. Friends, this story definitely shows us that the value of family is invaluable and the connection that arises from pure and innocent love, like that of these brothers, is unbreakable. It transcends far beyond time, distance, and even different social classes. We must never deny who we are or where we come from, take advantage of every minute that life allows us to share with our loved ones, and honor that bond that completely unites us with them, giving them all our support and affection to ensure their well-being. It will be the only thing that will allow us to feel truly full and happy. Remember, if you like this story, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell so that you're always aware when we upload a new story for you. Dear friend, until next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.